Welcome everyone to another episode of the Powerhouse Podcast. I have to tell you, I am super pumped as I have one of my most favorite people in the ring with me today to go a few rounds. I have the amazing Charlie Caldwell and he is just absolutely a powerhouse and you're going to see why in just a second. So before we get started, let me just say hello to my friend. Welcome Charlie. How are you? I'm doing so great. I've been looking forward to this so much because I know the energy you bring and I know where we're going to go with this. I'm so excited about it. Excellent. Well, as you all know, this is our place to have a deeper conversation around what it really means to be a leader today. Uh, we are redefining the definition of leadership. Leadership is a choice. It is all in how you choose to show up, how you choose to serve others, and how you choose to take personal responsibility in that space. And so this is another one of those big conversations that's going to get meaty and rich and juicy. So I know we're in for a really good show. Before we jump in, let me tell you a little bit about my friend, uh, Charlie, who I actually had the honor of meeting a couple years ago as we uh, shared space with one of our mentors. And so um, just a little bit about Charlie's background. I think it's important that you know where he's coming from. Uh, Charlie uh, actually had an opportunity where he went from kind of burnout to being able where he was, you know, and we all know that story, right? Burnout, working long hours, um, just out of space where you're not living life to the fullest. And he had an epiphany where he realized that recurring revenue equals freedom. And so in October 2000, he realized that it was time to step out and play a bigger game. And I love that he sold his first business, which was a profit center and reoccurring subscription review. Um, and so he really stepped in, has really stepped into this magical space over the last 18 years, um, helping individuals, entrepreneurs, small businesses and organizations create their own freedom by living purposely, passionately, positively, product productively, and profitably. And you all know how I like alliterations, so I like that there's five Ps, through his teaching, online training, and coaching business called the Life and Business Success Group. He is also an international high-performance coach, which I think is just phenomenal. And he's had over 30,000 high performance coaching sessions uh, with many, many different people. And so I could sit here. He's also, I wanted to share a couple accomplishments. He's a published co-author of two best-selling books. I'm having it and having ease with money. He is an international professional, passionate speaker. Yes, you will hear a lot of passion from this man. And he is a YouTube podcast creator of health, wealth, and happiness and business and internet mastery. Uh, rather than continue to read just all of his accolades and amazing, just everything he's done, let's dive in. Charlie, welcome again. So glad to have you here. Oh, thank you so much. One correction, I 3,000 high performance sessions. Oh, what did I say? <laughs> yeah, 30,000. So oh, well, there you go. Hey, I'm already putting out the intention, right? No worries. Big about imagine sure we're if came here. So. Right on that. So, regardless, uh, yeah. Charlie, tell us a little bit about your journey getting into the space around freedom and what does that really mean as you're sharing that message with the clients that you work with and the people that you're engaging with on a daily basis yeah the easiest way to kind of describe that is realizing that when i built that business which was an internet service provider where we had people subscribe to connect to the internet with a local phone call i got that recurring revenue equals freedom idea in 1990 i want to say it was 92 and then i kind of toyed around with it, put a plan in action in 94, started the business in September of 95, Internet Services in Michigan, which is where I'm from originally. And then within, what is that, like a little over five years, we sold it. Hmm. And they bought the recurring revenue. And I bought a big motorhome with my now ex-wife, with the mom to my girls, very wonderful person. And we're great friends. And we have co-parenting and all that kind of stuff. But we got in a motorhome for basically a year and hit the road. But the lesson learned was this, building that business blew out so many relationships because I didn't know how to lead and I didn't know how to take care of myself. I let the business run me. And this is something that is this recurring theme with a lot of people that I've worked with, coached, consulted with, helped over the years is how do I create you know, that business but keep, and I don't like the word balance so much, like life balance, I'm not a fan of that. I like the word harmony. Same. I like to have harmony in all these different areas. So that if I'm in work mode, I'm doing well there, but then I can shut the laptop and be in harmony with the people around me, my daughters, my wife, whatever that would be. And so I really had to get to terms with that. 
And I think over the last 18 years, that's probably the number one lesson. And the number one thing I'm passionate about is making sure that people are living into that and really owning that. So that's where high performance comes in. In the last six, seven years now, I've been a high performance coach. And that really helps foster that. Like, what do we have to be clear about? What's our purpose? What do we have to do on a day-to-day basis? And what's the mindset shifts that we have to do to live into that? So it kind of ties it all together that way. Yeah, and I love a couple things that you say that I really want to dig into further. First, I love that you already went there. Um, And I think the fact that, you know, this whole idea of life balance or life work balance is such a cliche and it's a myth oftentimes. And I I really have such a strong belief that it is about harmony. It's about making sure that that center that's always moving is in harmony with all of the aspects of your life because people's buckets change, right? Not everybody has the same buckets they need full at the same time. And so what I'm really curious about, because you, you mentioned this, one of the, your biggest, I guess, learnings through this process was really learning how to lead. And so I'm curious, one, how do you define that term lead? Because I think it's one of those business buzzword bingo things we throw out sometimes that says, oh, I'm leading. What does that really entail? And where did you start? Because that's often the question for people start when it came to that self-care for yourself. Yeah. So let me go through the lead piece and then with mm-hmm. the self-care piece, the lead, the number one thing I learned in 2011, where I feel like I went from a C grade leader and believe me up until then, I thought I was an A grade leader to a B, maybe an A minus was when I learned in high performance, people support what they create. Mm. And so instead of going into meetings where I'm like, today we're going to cover all this. And I had a team of 15 people. I went in the meeting and said, Hey, did I tell you guys I'm grateful for y'all being on the team? Mm. And I saw what you did this week because we've had those meetings weekly. Before we get started, I'd like to go around the room and just share what's something that you really owned or you're grateful for, for the week. And what's something that you're working on that maybe we can all help you with. And it really opened this co-creative piece. And the best leaders lead by example. So I was like, instead of delegating a lot, I would, and this is what I still do today, I would systemize it with them, like lead the charge on the systemization of something, and then turn it over to them, but we would co-create the systemization. So you see this weaving of co-creation in everything. If I'm ever involved in any project, you'll see it's a co-creation. And that wasn't the case even a decade ago. So when I sold to kind of go to the other side of this, the self-care piece, when I sold the business, October 10th of 2000, I was about 270 pounds. Mm. And it was because I just put everything on hold except the business. There was a big bubble of business and all these little other bubbles were like popped. <laughs> like self-care, like relationships and all this other stuff. And I wasn't doing that intentionally. It was just like business grew so fast that I felt like, oh, I can't possibly. But I didn't know, and we grew that team fast, was what I just talked about. I did not do a good job of leadership. I did not do a good job delegating. And co-creation, if there was any, was at a very minimal accident level. So it kind of tied back into that. I believe that if I led with more intention from a place of co-creation, especially in the last three years of that business, that I would have been able to dial in my self-care because I would have had less on my plate and less on my mind towards those ends. Does that all connect? It absolutely connects. And I I love the fact that you really emphasize the word or the frame, I should say, I I think of it bigger than just a word, um, is that co-creation space. Um, I know as people lead and many times, um, I think it's interesting that they'll say, well, they're leading from fear. Not really possible. You can't lead from fear. You lead kind of wide open. And so um, I love that there's this space of co-creation that even you very honestly admit wasn't really that natural space 10 years ago. And so when you think about, um, you know, what co-creation has really looked like, I'm I'm curious around a couple things. Uh, One, because I know you're a systems guy. I I love that you're a systems guy. It's actually one of the things I'm like, man, I wish I had a little more Charlie in me. Um, When you think about where people can step forward in terms of how they co-create, what are some of the systems they should be thinking about first? What are some of the ways that they can invite, and I think it really is an invitation, invite others to join them in that space to co-create a system that's going to take things to the next level and create that self-care and harmony that you're talking about. Yeah, well, let's break system down. I think we'll start here. When I think of a system, I go back to the definition of a habit, Mm -hmm. which is in Charles Charles Duhigg's book, The Power of Habit, he talks about a cue or a trigger, followed by a routine, followed by a reward. And so what a system is, at least the way I teach it and perceive it, 
is a series of habits. Mm. So all we're doing as a collective co-creation is saying, what are the habits that make up the system? In what order? And where do we really need to make sure we're hitting the mark for the routine and the reward? So it benefits more than just us. Mm-hmm. So part of that system, there's an inherent improving people's lives or growing people's businesses or both. That's the high level of purpose for what I do. If, it, if that system isn't doing either of those things, then we need to question it and we need to make it do those things. You know, it's as simple as, as the way we answer the phone, right? Oh, it's so-and-so. Can we help you? <laughs> or, hey, it's so-and-so. Are you having a good day? Different tonality, different shift. That system, that mini, mini habits, if you will, of answering the phone is, is different. And when the team gets involved in those creation of habits and they think of it that way, every cue is an opportunity for growth and it helps the system build into this amazing thing. And I've seen it again and again. Does that help? It does. And um, I think for me myself, I just had a kind of an epiphany around you simplify the idea of system into something that's very manageable and something that really, as I think about kind of that, I don't know how many of you are fans of the, what about Bob? You know, it's all about the baby steps. We tend to, because the word system sometimes can seem so complex. You know, we think about systems that are intertwined and interconnected in the way they are. And you think about, I know when I hear system, I think of airway traffic control, you know, Um, instead of realizing it's as simple as a series of habits that you're pulling together to create more efficiency and create more effectiveness, create more productivity and to allow yourself to lead from a very intentional place. And there's honestly just an epiphany I had as I'm thinking about that. I'm like, wow, system's really simple. It doesn't have to be complex. And I think it's, it's, it's a true testament around some of the assumptions we put forth and, and not breaking things down. So I really, truly, um, just for myself included, really have some deep appreciation for you breaking it down that way uh, yeah. because it makes it Thank so you. simple. It's about changing some habits. It's about putting some of the very intentional discipline habits in place that allow us to stand in a place to lead more purposely. Um, so I really like that. And so I'm curious, Charlie, because you know, you, you've got, like I said, you are a systems guy. I've watched some of your work. We've, we've gone through some of your pieces before and there's just such a clean way it moves. Did you know you were going to get to this point? I mean, when you think about 18 years ago, when you kind of started this journey to get into that transition space, when you were starting to have your own epiphanies, epiphanies, man, I can't speak today, epiphanies around what was next. What did you imagine and how is the space you're currently in still in that frame or did something completely different um, show up as a result? So I'm just kind of curious about that dance there a little bit for me. Yeah. So let me break it down a little bit. When we sold the business, we were so wiped out mentally, emotionally and physically just because of the sheer load. Like I used to have a pager that had 47 (laughs) servers. If anything went wrong with any of them, it buzzed me. So there was very rarely a night. We would shift that pager among me and a couple others. But if there was a night that I was on call, I knew I just probably should stay up (laughs) Uh, because it could be anything, right? So the reality of it was, is I think about that epiphany. As soon as we sold the business, my job was to dry out. Mm -hmm. It's just to come off that. And I would literally wake up with the shakes at night thinking that, what about the servers? It was on, and I've never been on drugs, but it, it, people have described coming off of drugs mm-hmm. where they're shaking it out and their body sweating. It was all that stuff was happening. And it was crazy. But about a year after the business sold, I got into this, this mentally low place of I wasn't working with technology and I wasn't helping people. And later on, as I went down my own path of personal development, I realized I wasn't living purposefully with all the gifts that I feel that I have to help others. So about a year and a half after the business sold, so six months after that going down in those, that lower mental place, I started a business that continued with the development and marketing aspects of what we did in that internet company, which was in its baby stages. That was in the year 2001 too, when it wasn't everything it is today. Like social wasn't a thing yet, that kind of stuff. And so I was like, okay, I really have to step into that. But it wasn't the awareness level that I have today that at the end of the day, when I feel purposeful, it's two things that have been checked off for me. I've improved somebody's life or many lives somehow, or I've helped somebody grow their business or both. And a lot of times they're intertwined. Right. So it was like really redefining and living into what it means to live purposefully. But spending, I spent, I'd say 
hundreds of hours defining what that means. And now I'm just humming high. And on the days where I just feel a little off kilter, you know, I need to be course corrected. I've got tools in place to do that. That I attribute to the high performance work we've done in the last six, seven years. Yeah. So does that answer the question? It does. And so I'm curious because, you know, it's great to talk about this. And I think, you know, yeah. the wheels are turning for a lot of people that are listening right now. But I'm curious because sometimes we need to bring it down to the very pragmatic, very real yeah. um, kind of vulnerable space. So what are some of the habits that you've instilled on a daily basis that allow you to be more purposeful in terms of how you're impacting others, how you're helping them grow your business? I would imagine, <coughs> excuse me, that there are some daily habits that yes. you've created that really either start your day with very clear intention and or end your day in a way that gets to be very purposeful. Kind of, I like to always say it's the morning intention and the evening reflection. It's those bookends. Yeah. What are a couple of those habits that have really been game changers for you so that you can stand in this place to really serve at the level that you're doing? Yeah, big, big, big game changer. And I've really worked diligently to put this in play. And by no means am I masterful of it. Owning the morning. Mm -hmm. so up and literally, and this was so awkward for me, even in the last years, I put it in play to get up and literally sit for 10 minutes and visualize the day, visualize going in. And I've always done that part, not for 10 minutes, but I visualize going into the next meeting, doing that. Like, what can I do to really, uh, what am I going to need to be aware of was really my thing. But now when I visualize, I'm asking, what is the best version of me mm -hmm. going into this part of my day? What are maybe some of the points that I want to hit? What am I going to elicit from others to live into people's support what they create? And I use this tool, very powerful tool, called sentence starters. Mm. So a sentence starter for me, if I'm in a place where I want to motivate, inspire others, is my dream for you is mm. dot, dot, dot. And so I'll reflect on in my visualizations, like if I, if I elicit that or I go through that sentence starter, what is going to be the dream? And I'll dream big. So at some point, I'll drop that. And I have other sentence starters, too, that really help. Just these little sentence starters that I remember, and I just rely on my ability to figure things out, to fill in the rest beautifully, passionately, and purposefully. And it works. But it's constant practice. So the big own the morning piece with visualization is one. And then really shutting the day down and sticking as, as diligently as I can to getting eight hours of sleep a night. That's how I lost all the weight. And just so you know, it was, I'm a date freak, so I know all these dates. July 25th, 2012 is when I went below 200 pounds for the first time in over 20 years. And it was everything about, people say, what's the one thing? It's everything about that visualization of the future, who I wanted to be, and then visualizing as I was eating something, going towards that or detracting from that. So sleep, tying it right back to sleep, Everything about making better decisions during the day, feeling more energy, being able to handle things better, all that kind of stuff. So the ending, like you said, bookending the day, mm -hmm. very important morning practices, very important shutdown, but owning sleep, hydration, and then eating. I eat about 80, 90% nutrient rich. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, I have, a, I call it bringing out my big boy self. And I got to thank my friend Drew for that saying, <laughs> I'll go old school, but just one meal a week and I'll enjoy it. One of mine is lasagna. But I hope that helps. It's that bookending of the day with visualization okay. and then sticking true to those, those habits that really support clear mind, purpose, being positive, those kind of things. Yeah, um, and it definitely helps. Uh, one of the things we reiterate constantly is the importance for those bookends, that, that sacred time, um, the way you start your day, the way you end your day, um, rather than getting up and right away being in someone else's stuff for the social media or email or phone or whatever, same thing with the end of the day. And I think, in fact, I was just reading an interesting article um, around how much sleep really does affect not only your health, but your life. And I think so many of us, and I know I was in that cycle too. I mean, when I had my rock bottom and was in the hospital, it was because I was living on maybe four hours of sleep and it wasn't even restful sleep. It was that collapse moving 80 to 100 hours a week that I was working and it was constant high stress that I hadn't given myself that same permission. And so I, I love that you beautifully talk about that. I also really want to focus for a moment on just that, the fact that the power of visualization, um, I, I find 
kind of interesting. In fact, I was just having a conversation with a client of mine who um, we were joking because I've had people say to me, oh, I've read The Secret and it doesn't work. And I, my flippant response usually is, did you read the back cover or did you read the book? And they will say, well, I asked the universe for what I wanted. It didn't deliver. I'm like, that's not what that book says. It says to get so deeply connected to what you are visualizing as your outcome, that you have created such a clear picture that everything about you, your senses, your beliefs, your heart, your vision, all of that gets so connected that then you start asking a question around, am I opening up access to receive it? Am I doing the very things that you're talking about when you talk about system and creating those habits? habits that's really allowing me to be more intentional, be more purposeful, and am I showing up in a space to create what I need to fill those buckets in that space? So I, I absolutely love that you talk about that. And I'm curious as you talk about the sentence starters, as we have you know a wide audience that's listening to us right now, if yeah. you could say my dream for you is so it's kind of I want you for a moment to imagine if if you could have a wish or a dream that you bestowed upon this audience what would that be I would love to hear how you would finish that sentence oh easy that goes right into those five p's my dream is for everybody on the planet to live purposefully mm. and each of these p's is a question in itself and a rating so when I say purposefully it's like am I living purposefully do I feel purposeful in my day in my year Mm -hmm. And what do I give myself as a rating there? Zero to 10, right? 10 being I'm very purposeful, zero being I don't even know what that means. <laughs> and okay, that's no purpose. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what that means. Passionately. And I would even dare to say, as, as uh, Brendan Burchard talks about in his new book, High Performance Habits, mm -hmm. the highest performers are actually obsessed. It's beyond passion. They are obsessed with what they're trying to go after. It's common for them to hear things like, you're crazy. Why are you doing that? And they're like, because I'm, I'm on the hunt. I'm yeah, going it's after that burning it. necessity that it's a have to for them. It's That's an absolute exactly it. have to. Yeah. Not the negative have to, but the I don't have a choice. This is everything I'm about. Yeah. I, yeah. So the, the big question there is, am I passionate with what I'm doing in the different realms of my life yeah. to keep harmony? And then the positivity piece, am I positive overall on a daily basis or in the different roles of my life? with myself, with my lover or love, <laughs> whatever you want to say there, with my family, friends, team, customers. Mm -hmm. And then the next, am I productive? And when we talk productivity and high performance, it isn't about getting more done. Am I getting the right things done in all areas of life? That harmony is in play. And then finally, is what I'm doing profitable? That's what I've taught so many entrepreneurs. They're out there doing the other P's and they just are broke. They're trying to be the entrepreneur to go after their dream, but they haven't had the training or the coaching to create beautiful offers that they're obsessed about so that they know without reasonable, any kind of doubt that that offer, whatever it is, coaching or helping people with a website or marketing, whatever it is, is so a part of their being a fabric that they get pulled to have the conversation rather than try to push into the conversation. So my dream for everybody is living those five Ps. Purpose, passion, positivity, productivity, profitability. Yeah. And I, so you guys know how I love my scale of one to 10. Um, any way that you can create a metric for yourself to get really honest and have that truth teller uh, is really important. And so are you creating, I'm gonna add another P, the pause to actually assess those five Ps because, and I love people like, well, it's hard to be positive. Just like happiness, it's a choice. You get to choose what frame, you get to choose what perspective, to throw the fifth, sixth P out there, seventh, whatever it is at this point, um, because it really is, it's the pause and perspective around how you're choosing um, to yeah. stand in that space. And so, I want to continue a little bit of this conversation, but before I forget, because I know we're going to keep kind of playing here a little bit, Charlie, as people are hearing some of this and, and, and you're really bringing to life what it means to be high performing in your own life. And it really means to embrace and start to measure those five P's in a way that allows you to be more intentional and purposeful. How can they get in touch with you to continue the conversation? I want to make sure that we don't forget that piece because I think yeah. there's some people that are going, okay, What's next? I want to see what he's doing. I want to, I want to know how to engage um, in a deeper conversation. So what's the best way for people to get a hold of you? Yeah, the best way is to go to lifeandbusinesssuccess.us. 
Awesome. And that's a site. I built that site in Kajabi, which is a wonderful tool that a lot of the experts are using. Love that tool. Yeah, Love amen. the new version. <laughs> But on there, and I'm, I'm adding these in, I have these online assessments, one for life, nice. one for business, one for internet. And there's seven key areas with seven big themes mm. that you rate yourself on. It takes three to five minutes. And it shows me where you're, you need the most help and we're able to prioritize that together. As you probably know about me, I'm a systems guy. You've, you've said that. And it's really important for me to get, to get that conversation started right from that place. Because I, it's, it's the other side of it is, hey, just give me a call. We can see what you need. But I really like to say, okay, these are the areas of life where you're falling out. So mm-hmm. a real quick example is the very last item in the life assessment is my life's ambitions. Mm-hmm. And you literally rate yourself. And I'm going after my life's ambitions. I know what my life's ambitions are. I have no regrets if I was to die tomorrow because I've lived into those things. And you give yourself a rating. And it's that that cat- serves as a catalyst for what we can do together. And then I have on the back side of that, I, I built this amazing, in the last six months, and I'm using other people's words, amazing life and business mastery community, which has all these different ways for me to help others and, and do these things. It's like a monthly program that we get into, and we have two trainings a month and all that kind of stuff. So that's later on down the road, but the assessments are where people usually start them. And 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 I'm a big fan of assessments. I think anytime you take that pause and you create a lens to evaluate where your gaps are, but more importantly, where your opportunities are. And I think, you know, when assessments are done in a way that allow you to ask the bigger questions, um, you all know, I, I, you know, I'm a big fan of the assessments out there. I have some of my own. It's that space around really getting honest with yourself. And and sometimes we're afraid to, to ask those questions. And it's, when um, you choose to, to step in that space, things can change. And so, you know, Charlie, we've talked about kind of your dream for others, but, you know, as we're talking about, you know, going bigger, dreaming bigger, really planning a space, I'm curious as you are looking out on the horizon, what's your big imagine if for you? What's the space that as you think about 2018, how you want that to unfold? What's the big stake in the ground that you're putting out there that says, imagine if... Yes. Dot, dot, dot. So there's a sentence starter for you. Imagine if that. for you, dot, dot, yeah. dot. My imagine if is to really help people through the beautiful work we're doing in our community, mm-hmm. the mastery community, and from the value that we put out because of the mastery community. I have this dream for my girls now, they're 13 and 15, to be here more for them. I've done a lot of travel in the last few years. They're in high school and well, going, my youngest is going in high school next year. And I want to make sure as I don't miss out as a dad mm-hmm. on these moments. And I have a studio I build up in the sky. It's in this high rise condo. We got all the lights, got the camera, live cast, everything. We do all the training from the whiteboard and the TV. So my imagine if is just to expand beyond mm-hmm. who we're serving our beautiful community members now and the people in the world that way and just go for it. Mm-hmm. Serving from the beautiful studio in the sky in Fort Myers, Florida, but helping people live into those five P's in mass. And so it's the scalability for 2018, but the scalability with the right people. Mm -hmm. Something I always teach is making sure that they're a good fit and they really want to go after it. We're all about full on, let's take care of it. I know you're like that too. (laughs) Well, and I I think it's important when you're building community, you and I have a very shared focus for 2018. Mine is we've been, because we've been on the road together through various things and uh, it's been a lot of road warrior time and I while I don't have kids I have the fur baby and it's the same thing it's like I want to build a community here that's both a virtual and local platform so that you can serve more and more of those people that really need to be in that camp with you but it's that space of being able to be home being able to be present being able to build the relationships that serve the other side um, of who you are which is really ultimately who you are. The business is just a tool and a symptom in a way that you can serve on mass capacity. So I absolutely love that. And you know, Charlie, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you kind of end things with, with kind of maybe a hard takeaway for the audience. But before we do so, I, I sincerely wanna thank you for joining us today. I, I love everything about you. I know when we first met, it was just that kind of kismet energy that said, you know, kind of my brother from another mother kind of energy that just, you know when good people show up in your life. You know when people people who bring something that's powerful that you pay attention and Charlie's really been one of those people for me and so it's just with deep gratitude that you are here on my show you're sharing a little bit about 
who you are and, and your message. And, and I know that there's so many people that are, are listening and taking action just on some of the things that you shared. So my deep heartfelt thank you uh, for you being here and uh, playing in space with me today. I just love you. Oh, I love you too. And thank you so much for this beautiful time together and helping you out. And the big thing that I would say for the people listening is this. Mm -hmm. Take some time, get out a piece of paper or a coloring, you know, a piece of paper with crayons or colored markers or a whiteboard or a flip chart and just draw out how you visualize you being your best self for yourself, for those you care for, love, serve, and the world. Just spend some time there and then kind of reflect, hey, have I been even close to this in the last week or what work do I need to do? Finally, just picking three big moves. Mm -hmm. you know, okay, of what I've discovered of myself through this five, 10, 20 minute visualization, what's three big moves that I could work on? And maybe not work on them all at once, but in February or March, do one. April, do another. May, do another. Just spend a month on each. Prioritize them, of course. That's been the, probably the biggest takeaway that a lot of people have had, and me included, that's really helped them the most towards stepping in and feeling the more vibrant emotive connection in life and i love that so that would be that would be what i want to leave you out leave y'all with <laughs> i love that too and I, I challenge and invite all of you to play in that space don't yeah. adult so much don't get i love that charlie said find the crayons find the colors it's amazing when you step into that space to play in your own imagination and your own imaginative and you start to allow the creation to unfold for itself and allow that flow to come in just how powerful that can be so i don't want you to think about this from your adult lens i want you to truly tap into the inner child in you that you no knows how to play that big imagine if space and get the crayons out and see what what takes shape and what you start to get that vibrancy that passion that joy around um and so i love that thank you charlie yeah, totally. thank you so much for being here thank you to thank all you. of you for continuing to join us on this journey for being here with us today remember as always that leadership is a choice it is how you choose to show up it is how you choose to serve others and it is how you choose to take personal responsibility in that space and it starts with you saying yes to yourself in order to be more intentional and purposeful and so go out and absolutely leave your mark make it a phenomenal day and be sure to subscribe so that you do not miss an episode with any of the amazing powerhouse thought leaders I am bringing and so blessed to bring into this space. With that, everyone, I love you dearly, sending you all heart-to-heart -heart hugs. I will catch you on the next episode.